Oh, good morning, sunshine. It's mighty good to see you, bright sunshine. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, my illustrious, illustrious, beautiful family. How are you? Ah, welcome to this damn crazy house. Oops, with me, <laughs> your host, Khadija. Um, y'all really dig in deep. Um, because you remember this is mental health awareness month. It is still <laughs> Live and kicking, okay? But let me just say good morning and afternoon to wherever you may be, family, whatever side of the diaspora that you are on. Let me welcome you. Let me thank you for tuning in to this damn crazy house that we, this place we call our, that we call the mental house, right? Because we just can't figure it out. Is it more crazier out there than in here? Which is the craziest, right? I just want to make a comment because a couple people asked me, um, excuse me, people asked me about Kwame Brown and the <laughs> and the rant that he's been going on, <laughs> tearing up. The internet, internet, and beyond with his rent and talk about what goes on behind the Iron Curtain, <laughs> pretty much, right? And I just want to say this with all due respect to all the players involved. <laughs> um, I want to thank Kwame because it's very important that... Um, People understand that when you pull up the skirt of, of the garment, it's always filthy, but the long garment hides um, what it is that is corrupt. And so there are these little gatekeepers that are in place when you talk about show business, when you talk about anything. I mean, that's, that's involved where the money resides, where the money resides. And Kwame just came in with both guns busting at these individuals. Um, he showed the hypocrisy in it all. And in case y'all want to know what did I know about Kwame Brown, look, I love me some Kwame. And it was no disrespect. I, one of my first dogs uh, 20 years ago when he was the number one draft pick by Michael Jordan, my dog name was Kwame. Okay, just so you know. That's how much I thought of that. Big young buck. Okay. Um, so my my point is I know basketball. If anybody know me, no, I know it really well. But I wanna say I commend Kwame Brown. I commend him for getting all that stuff out because there's more room out than in, brother. And you proved, you proved. That you just been, have been sitting back, observing, taking notes. Uh, but in fact, showing an, a tremendous amount of discipline, showing a tremendous amount of restraint uh, for the people who have insulted you, who have slandered you, who have disrespected you. And to me, there's nothing crazy about that. That's something that is very... Um, commendable. So I commend you for that personally. But I just wanted to say that <laughs> if you wanted to know my true feelings about that, I just had to say it because a long time ago, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that, you know, if you wanted to entertain the masses of people, then you're going to end up doing exactly what the masses of people want you to do, and which is most times put on some type of monkey suit and be directed the way that they want to direct you. And if your message is pure, 
will support you, will uh, uplift you, will drive you. But Elijah Muhammad was never really, really one that was very, very, that he was one that was very, how should I say it? Not a big fan, um, opponent, a proponent of show business and the people who ran Hollywood and things of that nature. So a lot of times people that were uh, in the nation at that time were not encouraged to do too much, um, you know, entertaining. A lot of people don't know that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is a very, very, he's a prof prolific uh, violinist. And he's extremely talented. And even as an old man, he can still pull that thing out and serve it up. So, but most of us that were uh, members of the nation back then, we knew that there was two Hollywood, there was two actually fields to entertain. And I think my, um, a, a couple of my, of, how old was that? They used to say, there's two things. Either it's, either you are, um, either you just want to sing or do you want to, no, do you want to sing or do you want to be in show business? Because they're two different things. Okay. The business of show is totally different than singing. So what Kwame did was just come and rip up, rip up all the illusion. He exposed all the crap um, and let you know that the people that are sitting in front of you, um, a lot of times are pretty compromised individuals. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, keep speaking truth to power. It is important because until we begin to understand that and stop selling ourselves out for a mess of pottage like Judas did. Um, then nothing ain't going to change. Nothing changes, as you say, Charlemagne, unless things change. So with that being said, um, and, and by the way, I bought your book because um, I believe in addressing mental health. So let me just put a disclaimer out there as well. Um, but it's interesting. And I like to hear people speak from the heart. Because that's very important when you're talking about healing. So now all y'all better buck that and leave this man alone because you didn't harass him for 20 years and disrespect him. And Charlemagne disrespected him when he told his father his family's history that he didn't even know, but that wasn't in his position to speak on. And so that's what that's what the retaliation was, in my opinion, against Charlemagne. But I still am from the school. Is um, can we all just get along, okay? Um, without that bull, okay? So if we gonna talk about it, we are gonna keep it real because you're not gonna come representing somebody else and then talking to me okay. like you some special uh y'all know what i mean special negro so I, I i get it i get where it came from and i understand what it exposed so with that being said i'm gonna go if you like what you hear please like subscribe sh share that is my take <laughs> Uh, on Kwame out here blasting everybody with these machetes and chopping off heads. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.